But first, I'm John Bachman. The second Dallas hospital worker to contract Ebola has now been identified. 29-year-old Amber Vinson caught Ebola while treating Thomas Duncan at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas. The CDC says Vinson will be flown to Atlanta for treatment at Emory University Hospital. That's where Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightball also were successfully treated before recovering from the virus. And President Obama will be meeting with his cabinet in about a half an hour to work on the government's response to the Ebola outbreak. The CDC also announcing today that that second Dallas nurse we just mentioned about was on a Frontier Airlines flight from Cleveland to Dallas the night before her temperature spiked. And now it seems the Ebola outbreak may be uh, spooking investors on Wall Street. Airline stocks tumbling today. Shares of the major U.S. carriers down between 4 and 6 percent at midday trading. The Dow S&P and NASDAQ were all down sharply as well as much as 300 points in the Dow. And there are about a dozen new charges filed today in relation to the deadly 2012 terror attack on Benghazi. The new indictment says Ahmed Abu Qatala actively took part in the attack on the American outpost on September 11th that killed four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens. It also confirms the theft of a State Department computer containing classified documents. Some of the new charges could lead to the death penalty for Qatala. And in South Florida, jury selection starts today in the trial of a former top executive at Swiss Bank UBS. Prosecutors say Ray Wheel helped thousands of people hide some $20 billion in assets from the IRS. Wheel was the first indicted back in 2008, but he was a fugitive until being arrested in Italy last year. He faces up to five years behind bars if convicted. UBS paid a $780 million fine for this back in 2009. And the U.S.-led military campaign against ISIS finally has a name, Inherent Resolve, as it's called. Also, the U.S. military. It says it's killed hundreds of Islamic State fighters during the most recent round of airstrikes on Kobani. And there are also new signs the Iraqi military is stepping up its own fight against ISIS. Take a look. The Iraq Defense Ministry uh, releasing this Im these images, deploying new rocket launchers to the front lines. This is actually a 24-barrel rocket launcher made in Russia. An Iraqi military official says it will add much-needed firepower to the Iraqi ground troops. And Dr. Doug Bootsier, the libertarian candidate in Iowa Senate race, dies in a plane crash. The single engine plane he was piloting crashed near the airport in Dubuque. And if you're going to pose as a cop, don't try to pull over another cop. But that's exactly what police say happened in Akron earlier this week. David Schofield allegedly impersonating a police officer tried to pull over a car. That, that car was driven by a real cop on his way to work. Then Schofield was soon under arrest himself. Police say they found a cache of weapons, including a rifle and shotgun, inside his car. And Gonzalo is now a major hurricane. The powerful storm continues to move closer to Bermuda, and it's also proven deadly. The storm is blamed for one death in San Martin and also injured 12 people in Antigua. Another Newsmax Now update for you in 30 minutes. I'm John Bachman. Now back to the Steve Malsberg Show.